This story, very important for what it reveals about the swamp and how all of this works. Go ahead and put this first piece up on the screen. So uh, the FBI has seized the electronic data of a retired four-star general who authorities say made false statements and withheld incriminating documents, so he was lying and covering up, uh, about his role in an illegal foreign lobbying campaign on behalf of the wealthy Persian Gulf nation, Qatar. Um, new lo- federal court filings obtained Tuesday, they were sort of, I think, accidentally released, actually outlined a potential criminal case against former Marine General John Allen, who led U.S. and NATO forces in Afghanistan, did a bang-up job there, great job, (laughs) before being tapped in 2017 to lead the influential Brookings Institution think tank. Side note, one of Brookings' longtime top donors, the nation of Qatar. Ah, interesting. Um, Okay, I did go deep on this. I will spare you all of the ins and outs, but let me just give you a brief sketch of what the government is saying went down here. There are three individuals who are really involved. One of them is General John Allen. The other is a former ambassador to the UAE and Pakistan named Richard Olson. And the third is someone they describe as a, quote, prolific political donor who's now serving a 12-year prison sentence on corruption charges related to those uh, donations, some of which were fraudulent. He would donate, that it was really on behalf of some foreign individual yeah. who uh, wasn't supposed to be donating in our political elections, or sometimes he would invent names to funnel donations through. There was all kinds of shady dealings going on here at the highest level. This man's name is Ahmad Zuberi. And um, if you look into the details of what happened with uh, Zuberi and uh, Olson and John Allen here, Basically, they were all colluding again. Allegedly, I'm sure their lawyers say this didn't happen, et cetera, et cetera. They were all colluding to come up with a way that they could represent Qatari's interests within the Trump administration. I want to say that this, though, story is completely bipartisan. This uh, shady Zuberi character who's now serving a 12-year prison sentence, he's got pictures with Hillary Clinton. Yeah, Biden. He got yeah. meetings with Joe Biden. Um, you know, this is a complete political mercenary who is a hired gun for the shadiest characters around the world to try to peddle influence here in Washington. And also, by the ta- by the way, sometimes with success. There's a uh, quote here. Go ahead and put this next piece up on the screen. This is about, um, this is about the U.S. Ambassador mm-hmm. Olson. Part of what happened here, this is the guy who was ambassador to UAE in Pakistan. He was in trouble with the FBI, and he was basically like, how come you're focused on me? And what about John Allen, who I had, like, I was in cahoots with this guy, and you're not looking at him at all. So that's part of how the FBI ends up at General John Allen's doorstep. Olson was being paid 20 k a month by this sketchy political donor dude serving the 12-year prison sentences. Um, and he also, the sketchy donor dude, agreed to pay Allen an undisclosed fee for his efforts, mm. uh, according to prosecutors in Olson's plea deal. But Allen's spokesman says the general was actually never paid. Um, they say in mid-June, Allen met with Olson and Zuberi at a Washington hotel to explain, quote, how he would conduct the lobbying and PR campaign, according to prosecutors. A few days later, they flew to Qatar at Zuberi, the sketchy political donor's expense, to meet with Qatari's ruling emir, other government officials, where the pair explained they were not representing the U.S. government, but noted they had connections with U.S. government officials that placed them in a position to help Qatar. Allen advised the Qataris on what steps to take, including signing a pending deal to purchase F-15 fighter jets and using a major military base in Qatar as leverage to exert influence over U.S. government officials. And what do you know? Just four days later, Qatar signed a deal to purchase those jets per Allen's advice. The last piece I want to uh, lay out for you here, and uh, the reporting from the AP has been uh, really yeah, strong. Great you job. guys want to, yeah, great job tracking all of this down. Go ahead and put this last piece up on the screen. Um, so, this one, the headline is Mercenary Donors Sold Access for Millions in Foreign Money. Prosecutors describe Zuberi as a, quote, mercenary political donor who gave to anyone, often using illegal straw donor cutouts he thought could help him. Pay to play, he explained to clients, was just how America works. He also said, we get requests for meetings from all scumbag of the world, warlords, kings, queens, presidents for life, military dictators, clan chiefs, tribal chiefs, and et cetera. And he says, everyone wants to come to Washington to meet people. So again, shady character, did not do a good job even hiding his illegal criminal behavior. 
no problem gaining access to the highest level officials on both parties. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead and put this next one up there on the screen. Ken Vogel makes a great point. DC think tanks always downplay suggestions that they're part of influence campaigns, but now the FBI says that the literal president of Brookings tried to hide his role in an illegal foreign lobbying campaign for Qatar. Look, they've got him dead to rights. He emailed the national security advisor of the United States who he knew and served in the military with while he was... I guess maybe getting paid by these people to say you should have a more friendly tone to guitar. Mm-hmm. How much more pay to play does right. it get? Yeah. People? Oh, and then this is even better. They have the three of them, or at least Alan and uh, Olson, yeah. conspiring of like, oh, what can we say that we were really doing? Let's say Alan was setting up a foreign military advisory panel for Qatar, and that's what he was really there for. So, and they have them hiding documents and making mm-hmm. up these stories that they go ahead and push to the feds. So. Yeah, it's damning. And Brookings, by the way, has already suspended this dude. He got the Weigel treatment. Yes, he got the Weigel treatment. They already put him on leave. (laughs) On leave. Uh, Presumably um, unpaid, although I'm not 100% sure sure about that. But, you know, here's the thing. People know this. I lived in Qatar. I went to high my last year's high school there. Brookings has had a presence in Qatar for a long time. And there's always been sketchy stuff with, like, the Brookings Doha institution. I could see it while I was there. Their basic plan is we know we're going to run out of oil and we got nothing else going on over here. So let's just pay, or natural gas also, Uh, let's go ahead and just pay off all the major institutions in the West, have them come here and intellectualize our society, which if you know anything about them, that's an interesting uh, thing to do over there. But that's what they've been trying to do with Brookings and others. Now, the problem was, is that when they got into all that snafu, people forget about this. They were like cut off by the UAE and the Saudis. It was like a whole thing. Then they used their buy-offs and institutional connections to lobby heavily the Trump administration and others not to just side with the UAE and to try and play a broker role. They mm-hmm. called in all their favors with Rex Tillerson. He was the Secretary of State yeah. at the time. And this was all unfolding. Exactly. This was all happening time. during that time. This is a big problem for Qatar because remember, Qatar, it's a tiny little peninsula. There's nothing going on there, and they're connected to the Saudis. They're one land border they just got cut off of, so they got to fly in all this stuff mm. over here. So they're apparently, you know, my mom had gone over there, and she was saying the grocery store, like everything was from Turkey and Iran all of a oh, sudden. Really? Yeah, because the food, the normal food, all that stuff got— but Anyway, it was a huge problem um, for the economy in Qatar. Now, what happened then is that they started calling in all the favors of all these billions that they've been paying off all of these Westerners. And this is exactly the issue with having all of this intertwined connection with these foreign governments. I mean, when you have these foreign governments are donating all this money and spreading it around town, nobody does it for free. There's always a cost, always. And that's something that so many people here have tried to deny. I'm not gonna say it's always pay for play, but it does never help. It never hurts, right? To give mm. fifty thousand or a hundred yeah. thousand, or well, pay some guy twenty grand a month I mean, or something. These stories, a lot of them are really are really quite connected because you see who actually is able to influence yeah. policy and actually get what they want. Oftentimes in Washington, and the sort of you know Absolutely the right. games they play to be able to do it. And you see issues that have huge public support and get no movement in Congress whatsoever. And then you wonder why you have the societal breakdown. It's not to excuse like the the criminals and the lunatics that would you know uh, cause mass violence mm-hmm. or political violence. But then you wonder why you have the societal breakdown of people who are like you know using these fringe and violent means to try to make their political. It's all a sign of a society in complete breakdown. When this is the real way to get influence and power across both political parties, that is a devastating state of affairs. And, you know, these think tanks, like, they have this very sort of, like, high and mighty Mm -hmm. type of image, especially in this town. Like, oh, we're just intellectuals here, like, coming up with policy ideas and trying to, you know, help. They're incredibly enmeshed in the uh, political world and provide the, the sort of backbone and thinking behind a lot of legislation that all ultimately gets done, Congress basically outsources a lot of their work to these these think tanks. And it's, I mean, this is, again, completely bipartisan and non-ideological. All of these think tanks are in bed with um, disgusting people and countries oh, and yeah. all the rest. Oh, yeah, Neera in the UAE, you remember yes, that? Yes, exa- that's exa- exa- stuff, exactly right. right. So, you know, this is the real, um, th- these, this cast of characters is far from the only one yeah. that is engaged in this. And, you know, I think it was the Wall Street Journal, I think it was, that wrote this up that said basically like, you know, if this dude, this Zuberi character is now in prison for 12 years, 
if he'd been a little bit savvier and just played a little bit more uh, on the the side of like what you can is legally permissible, he could have done all that he was doing in basically a legal way, and it would have been perfectly fine. And it's totally standard operating procedure here in this town. No, hundred percent. And just so people know, John Allen was one of those people who lied to the American people That's right. about the progress of Americans under uh, under the Obama administration while he was commander of all U.S. Oh, forces scoundrel. in Afghanistan. He lied to all of our faces. Then he endorsed Hill. I'll never forget this. He endorsed Hillary on the 2016 DNC stays like I'm a general and Hillary's gonna. To keep us safe. Then he became the Brookings head. This is as swamp as it possibly gets. Clearly still enmeshed in the military bureaucracy. He was rewarded for his lies and failures in Afghanistan with the Brookings post. And now, finally, you know, some several odd years later is actually being held to account maybe. for- Maybe. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Uh, I'd love to see him go down. Yeah. He is as swampy as it gets. Selling okay. out his country. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.